Thank you, uh, Mr. S President of the Assembly, distinguished IPO officials, fellow presiding officers, and parliamentarians, ladies and gentlemen. I bring warm greetings from the people of the Federated States of Micronesia. I want to begin with a quote, and I quote, all human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights, end of quote. I remember this same IBU assembly celebrating these words last year at the 70th anniversary of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. I myself was born, grew up, and was educated, then spent my adult life in a world that took those words for granted. This is so because we in Micronesia have enjoyed strong and stable constitutional democracy since our nation was founded 40 years ago. Yet our global legal order as created are under the rule of international law is under assault and is being threatened by the revival of old political passions for populism, unilateralism, nationalism, and even self-determination, to name just a few of the emerging political rallying cries of today. As we look around the world, these days one cannot help but feel that we are not only moving away from a world where we may not be able to live up to that ideal, but that we have begun to question that very ideal itself. We now see a world of walls going up, of neighbors attacking neighbors, of whole ethnic groups pushed out of borders, of countries exceeding from organizations to preserve their rights to control borders and for local political interests. At these times, it is good to remember what is the bedrock of our belief. It is international law. Without international law, there would be no need for this organization. There would be no need for the UN. There would be no need for countries around the world to come together to deal with common problems of our world. It will be a world like the bad old days when might made right, when the big and strong colonized and oppressed the small, and small countries had only the duty to remain silent. Coming from one of the smallest of countries, I am keenly aware of this, that Micronesia has a chance to even address this assembly today is a tribute to the rule of law, and as, as it concerns us today, international law. Let us be blunt. Big powers, big powerful countries do not need international law. They can throw their weight around like pools in a porcelain shop. We, the small countries, do need it. That was the way of things for millennia. Only since 1945, when the world decided that it was a good idea to build a world based on law, did a country like mine have the chance to be heard and our concerns as a small island developing state are being addressed too. That is why I am and we are passionate about international law. Like many of you, I was in the room when the Paris Agreement was adopted, and I view that agreement as essential to the survival of many of us small island states. Without international law and legal order, we, the small states, would not have the chance of advancing our common interest in forums like the IPU and the United Nations. Another exemplary result of international law indeed. I know the sea around us, which makes up three-fourths of the herd, is in danger of being overfished and asphyxiated. It is our life's resources, so we will work hard to come up with a legal regime to protect it. And international regime, the UNCLOS, has already started that process, <coughs> lovely. And it has given us the sovereign control over millions of square kilometers 
of the Western Pacific Ocean, something that was unthinkable just a few decades ago. International law, it is not perfect, but if you can find a better way for nations to deal with each other, let me know. For me, I have not found any. To me, this is the only peaceful and practical way to go with and by international law and the global order, legal order. Micronesia is a small and poor country, but we see this topic as a political imperative. To, me, to my delegation, also my delegation will go back home and request our Congress to appropriate up to 130,000 US dollars to contribute to projects or programs as IPUCs fit that would do just that. A small amount indeed, but we feel like doing something about this. I hope it would be of some use to our theme this year. As you will note, the amount also reflects the 130th anniversary of IBU. So I ask all of us, most especially our fellow small developing island nations and other small countries to join in this effort. It is for our international political relevance and equality, perhaps our political survival as well. Again, I congratulate IBU on its 130th anniversary. And thank you very much. Thank you very much.